This call is being recorded. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the artwork of CP. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying lockdown. <laughs> I say enjoying because um, I am, I think I am almost out of my lockdown. There's they are in Colorado. They are switching it to safer at home, not shelter in place. But um, I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. I could definitely see a light at the end of the tunnel. But today, Danielle and I have decided to um, talk about, because it will be a year, a year, my goodness, it will be a year that I lost my dad as of May 19th. So, I am going to talk about how I'm doing since then, because I really want to give you guys the honest update. And Danielle will be my sidekick to give you guys the honest update. And oh my goodness, it's been an interesting year. I mean, where do I start? I guess I'll uh, start this way. It's been, I interesting year I never ever 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 thought I always thought that um, my mom's loss was going to be tougher on me than my dad's loss but it's the opposite of the spectrum now isn't it Um, I think it's because I was daddy's little girl, I know, and for most of the women out there who are listening, and the men, too, you guys understand what I'm saying when I say um, I was daddy's little girl the whole entire way, and he just loved me to pieces. Um, the fact that he asked, um, one of his nurses, when I got down on, uh, let's see, Mother's Day was the 12th, um, Mother's Day was the 12th, I got, we got down there on that Tuesday, so yeah, the 14th of May, the 14th of May, I walk into a hospital room, he, he's of course in the stairs, my stepmom and my stepsister are scared to have to death because they don't know what's going on, I have the wherewithal to, um, I have the wherewithal to know what's going on because I've been under anesthesia and I've decided I I don't do well with anesthesia. Always wondered where um, that came from. I have decided it's in my genes. I got um, those genes from my dad all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. I got those genes. So they had the young laugh at me because I I thought, okay, mom does better with anesthesia. I don't do well. Where this coming from? Well, I saw it first hand. And so by the time we walk in to his hospital room on the on the fourteenth of May, which was a Tuesday, um, he was so in the sticks, 
it wasn't even funny to the point where my stepsister had to hold me up because he gave me a big giant bear hug to the point where I was going to fall over and on top of him. And it's not funny, you guys, but it is. And that's because he didn't want to let me go because he thought due to anesthesia, he thought I was in the car accident. And the funny thing was, was that one of his nurses that didn't know me from a hole in a wall, I didn't um, really get to interact with his nurses because he kicked every nurse and doctor out of there. But um, I, but the nurse said to me, um, who is when? And I, please raise my hand, you guys. I'm like, <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Same situation with my mom. Apparently, I've been told she um, named all, be, no, before naming all the people in the room after having major brain surgery. Thank you very much. She goes, who's taking care of when? And I'm like, okay! <laughs> you people don't you people don't want to what? You people don't want to get offended to you. Uh, so, so, and of course, my when my dad was up here for nine days of hell, thank you very much, we <laughs> went through nine days of Hell, Danielle and everyone else knows that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And so when he was up here, he said to me, the reason, and it almost broke my heart, and my stepmom knows this now, the reason why um, I can't get better is because I'm so concerned about you. And it's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! It's this is how this is how it was on uh Saturday morning, Ugh. and it's like oh dude, oh dude, you just set almost sent me to the ground on that one, and it's like dude, you just really really don't want to do this to you. And then he gets grumpy at all the nurses who are women trying to take care of him. The only three people, well, I got yelled. I got yelled at at the end because of something I said to a nurse, and I was just trying to protect him. But the only three people he really didn't yell and scream at were were myself. My stepmom and my stepsister. The rest of the world, he could have <laughs> <laughs> had a sit <laughs> at, and they ran the other direction. I mean, jeez. I mean, oh my goodness. He was so grumpy at the end. No, and my point, my point, at the time, she, uh, she had to put up with his grumpiness too. And it's like, oh, yay, 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 yay. Oh, the only, the only people he did not yell at, he, I, I got, I got, actually, that's not true. I got yelled at twice during this whole thing by him. My stepmom got a little, bit of the uh, of the nice lollipop. I uh, I got the funny end of the stick because I uh, yeah, because he knew he could take it out on me and then he turned around and said don't be mad at me I'm like, oh yeah, yeah you <laughs> just you just yelled at me and then said don't be mad at me and 
good places. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not the way it was. And of course, of course, he, um, I said, well, can I, you guys know this story. I said, can I give you a hug? And he goes, no, that hug takes too much energy. Well, by the time we got to Denver, he wanted to hug me. I said, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. I'm on my way to dinner. And he just, uh, he about busting to dinner. And I'm like, dude, you said a hug takes too much energy. Now, that was 24 hours. That was when he, he said that comment when um, he was up here and that was before he was properly diagnosed too. And I have a funny feeling that he didn't want to, he didn't want me to squish his, um, he didn't want me to squish his lung and make it more painful. That's why he, that's why he said it, looking back on it. I'm like, well, tip, typically when a person asks for a hug, can I give you a hug? Typically, um, if even if they're deathly ill, they say, okay, well, when you have the lung, when you have lung cancer, thank you very much. You don't, you're trying to get concentrated breathing. And it's like, I don't need a hug. I don't need you to squish the mask in my lungs. Thank you very much. So that's why, that's, so he got away with the hug takes too much energy. And then, uh, and then I'm like, okay, dude. So, and I never, I never gave him a hug at the end. All I said was, I love you, and that was it. All I all I could do was say, I love you, and he barely got, I love you up. So, needless to say, with the help of counseling, I am, and with the help of going back to school, and with the help of supportive friends like Danielle and some of them are behind the scenes and don't want to show themselves quite yet, but that's okay. Um, I am in the best spot that I could be in. I um, I am in the best spot that I could be in, even though um, this social distancing is driving me nuts and this um, safe and home is driving me nuts. And of course, he um, had my dad, and uh, so do I. I have, and I won't go into this, I have strong political views. And of course, which, with everything going on out right now, um, it is not very pretty political. Politically, and I keep teasing my stepmom. I keep saying my dad could not handle Donald Trump on a good day, and so she's like, "Well," and I, I keep saying to her that he could not handle Donald Trump. Now he would probably have a major hissy fit. Um, now if he if he was going to chemo and if he was a cancer survivor because um even in the hospital and I decided who I'm going to vote for on the presidential election, um when that comes around I'm certainly not going to vote for Donald Trump. I decided that in a V ADH, Aspen Valley Hospital, with my dad, thank you very much, while he was alive. So, even if he was a survivor of lung cancer, and even if he we went through chemo and all that good stuff, he his political views would not be best right now, because 
um, he would be going through his own challenges. And I, um, I, his heart attack, even though um, it's still a heart attack and nothing funny about a heart attack, his heart attack was a blessing in disguise. Because what I saw, the little that I was at the hospital, number one, I saw a grumpy person, which um, didn't make me too happy, because you're always supposed to be nice to doctors and nurses, and even even now, you're supposed to be nice to doctors and nurses. And then um, the lack of care at the um, rehabilitation center, and I still have the rehabilitation center's phone number in my phone book, and the lack of care was nuts. So I am happy in the sense that he passed away of a heart attack before dealing because um the when I left him we were supposed to um we all all four of us actually my stepsister him and my stepmom my stepmom being the his primary caregiver down in Denver because the rehabilitation center was doing nothing. Thank you very much. They just were uh, keeping him comfortable, but barely. Um. So um. So they were supposed to go meet with oncology. Um at University of Denver that next week. Well, um, well, I'm very thankful his body decided to take another, take another direction because I don't think he would have been such a great chemo candidate I, um, number one, he was weak. Number two, he was grumpy. Number three, um, he had a full, and I'm not kidding, a full head of hair, too. And, um, number, number one, with chemo patients, their biggest concern is losing their, losing their hair. And now with men, they start to lose their hair at early ages um, if they have the genes. But number one, I don't think he would have been a great cancer patient because he was grumpy and he was pissed off that he was even stuck in this position. So a year is a year is a year. A year is a year. And looking back on it, could I have done a much better the way I reacted to things? Yes. Am I still working on it? Yes. Will uh, two years out now be easier than one year out? Yes. But I survived my I survived my mom one a year. And believe it or not, in August, that one a year has now turned into ten years. And gee peace. So I'll be able to survive what um this last year has brought me and 2020 has brought all of us a time to reflect, a time to um, a time to switch roles, a uh, time to spend more time 
with family and um, a time to just re- reflect. Now, um, I am selling all bond. I am doing new skin. I am doing something else, but all bond and um, all bond and I have a couple other opportunities coming up here that I'm going to announce, but right now Albon is going to be my main income along with my books. So Danielle, will you stick books in the show notes and Albon in the show notes? I know you will. You're just listening to me right now. And so Danielle, do you want to um, say you piece to get me off the soapbox? Yeah, yeah, I mean, geez, I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be up on my feet, <laughs> you guys, without the support of um, my stepmom and really, 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 really supportive friends. And by the way, um, my aide who was here with me, we're still friends. We're still friends. We haven't, um, I think we're even closer now than we were <laughs> because, um, and looking back on it, starting out May 19th with a yelling, me doing the yelling more than her, and her looking at me like, when you're crazy, you're about to lose <laughs> your mind. And um, this was at 8 o'clock in the 7.30, mind you. No, this was at, it was at 8 o'clock in the morning. It was at 7.30, I thought. Um, I, because by 8 o'clock, I was on the phone um, with the rehabilitation center trying to figure out what happened. Now, at 7.30 in the morning, I started yelling and screaming, and that's not such a good look on my part, and she'll probably <laughs> never, she won't ever forget that. And so, the next time, the next time I really get that news, it was because what happened was, um, what happened was I got up at five, knowing knowing that something was wrong, and what happened was my stepsister called me. My phone started um going off at four a.m. I got up at five, knowing um knowing that something was wrong. And what happened was my stepsister called me at 6.15 a.m. and knowing, um, and then says, oh, I didn't mean to call you. The next text message I got from my stepsister was, uh, your dad had to go back to the hospital that was by a text message. By the time at nine a.m. hit, um, we we got to call my aide got to call and every every thing turned into a blur. So my um, my on the premises of me yelling at my aide um, at my best friend now um, at the premises of me yelling at her started out with my stepsister calling me and saying me, saying to me, I, I didn't mean to call you, and then sending me a text saying that your dad had to go um, back to the hospital. I like information. I like information. If I don't get the information, one of the things about me is if I don't get given the information, I I start 
researching the information myself and get really, really frustrated on people. So, yeah. So, I was really frustrated um, at my stepsister for not telling me until 9 a.m. what happened. And she um, told, she didn't even tell her um, her aunt, who happens to be my self aunt, they came into this house not knowing anything. And so I'm, I, it would have been easier if they, uh, if they would have told me face to face. Well, anyway, anyway, that's, um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I mean, once, um, once people send you a text message like that, um, it's all, it's all the, and then, um, once people call you and say, I forgot to, I didn't mean to call you, it's all over. So, yeah, yep. So, am I still working on myself? Yes, but I'll be um, working on myself for the rest of my life. And so, yeah, so that's that. But other than that, I'm in a positive spot. But this lockdown is driving me nuts. And so, Danielle, do you want to leave everyone out? Yeah. Thank you guys. Bye, you guys. Bye.